Okay, so this is my review on a Harbor Freight 60622 uh, gasoline powered auger. Now these are used for putting in fence posts and uh, sold under the Harbor Freight front of their name because that's, uh, that's kind of like their farm and ranch and gasoline powered equipment. Uh, this thing's a one man operation, it's not those big X things and I was working on a small fence repair job a day ago that somebody called me and they said oh it'll be real quick and we want it done right away. Uh, famous last words so uh, in that particular job I was they wanted me to repair an older fence that had uh, kind of started to crack apart and fall down in the wind and uh, not one of the jobs I'm proud of it's not going to end up in a video but they wanted it done fast and cheap and they got it done fast and cheap you know what I mean so uh, one of the things I ran into on that is uh, you know, one of those jobs where somebody gives you a hundred dollars and you gotta spend two hundred bucks to get it done. That's kind of what I ran into. So I had to go out and buy this auger or rent one and uh, end up just just being in a hole on it. I, I don't know why the hell I took that job, but uh, I figured it was about my second fence repair fence thing this month, and uh, an auger would have saved me some trouble. Now the way I normally dig a fence post for your four by four pressure treated lumber is that I'm, I'm going to use one of these things, okay? Uh, I sharpen it from time to time with a grinder. Somebody says it's not going to last as long if you sharpen it. Fuck that, okay? I'll buy another one. If I sharpen that thing down all the way to here, uh, uh, I've made enough money with it, I'll just go buy another one, okay? That, that's how that goes. So uh, you sharpen them, you can dig a little better with them, and... Uh, when you do sharpen these, you kind of got to get it from both sides because if you do it one way or the other, it gives you kind of a goofier act when you dig with it. But uh, one way to get into the dirt in a hurry and to kind of get into some harder soil than you can get at with this thing is to get an auger. Normally, this is something a lot of guys don't own. Even a lot of contractors don't own one of these. They rent them. And the problem with the renters is, is uh, not every Home Depot has them available, not every rental yard has them. And when they do have them, they tend to have the larger ones that take two people to run. So if you're working alone, you're, you're still kind of host, right? So I went to Harbor Freight. We got a Harbor Freight store here. We get uh, coupons and Oregonian Sunday paper that have gone from 20% off to 25% off. These things were on sale at just under 200 bucks, so I was able to get it for just barely south of 150. Uh, now, normally this thing goes for about 250, and you might even pay a little extra for shipping. And you know what? At at two or 250, it's not a rip-off deal. It really isn't. It generally comes in two pieces. You got a drive shaft here, and you got the auger. It does come with the bit, which is not half bad. I mean that's all steel. There's, there, it's it's powder coated for durability, and I read some other reviews online, and they say you're going to do a lot better if you sharpen up this little tip right here, which I didn't get around to, but I will. Uh, the angles on that are a little bit off, and so if you change that angle, uh, flatten this out and sharpen this, but but basically that roundness has to be gone away. Otherwise, this thing just becomes basically a little wheel bearing spins on top of the dirt but if you if you reshape that it'll dig a lot better and uh there's been some remarks on other people's youtube videos what happens with these things you know a one-man auger hits a rock or a root or a hard part uh if you have that thing sharpened down at the, the end it's just going to cut a root okay that's 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 going to cut it yeah if it's a big thick heavy root it'll take a while to cut it but it'll it'll cut it uh, little roots that just go through them and uh, so yeah you know they just uh, do a little sharpening down here uh, all this screw stuff here is just for carrying dirt out of the hole so that's that's just fine if that just stays the way it is and uh, uh, but here's the thing this thing is, isn't super powerful it's a 49 cc motor when it uh, runs down if it bogs down or something it just stops it'll bog down it's not going to twist your wrist or any of that kind of crazy shit uh, it's uh, got some pretty basic gas powered equipment controls on there and here's where it gets kind of important okay 
and I'm going to say that you got to fast forward to the five minute mark uh, on the video for all the how to stuff. So basically, you got a recoil starter, pretty normal shit, right? You got a little priming bowl down here, you press that, you see how that, that's moving in there. Uh, got a little priming bowl right there. Now, I've emptied out the fuel tank for storage. Modern fuel doesn't store very well. Uh, I emptied that out for storage. I might even pop this out and drain those lines. But uh, the other way to do it is with just a little bit left in there, I'm going to run it dry after I turn the camera off. This is your choke. Uh, depending on the age of the unit and the fuel mix that you actually end up with, although they talk about wanting a 24 to 1 fuel mix, I find that I do a little better for running it a little bit leaner than that is your position of your choke but chances are you never use the choke all the way on or all the way off okay but this is the choke setting for when you start it a little spark plug thing shouldn't have to screw that although they do give you a little spark plug wrench to get that out and clean it if you have to from time to time uh, this unit has a power transfer it actually comes it actually uses a transmission to get your shaft drive here to run the screw that's why the screw doesn't run real fast and they uh, they simply use the gearing in this transmission for that little 49 cc motor turn this at a good careful lazy speed but you get some rpms out of this thing and you'll get you know it'll do what it's supposed to do one thing you understand is these are shipped dry they're shipped with no transmission fluid so what you got to do is you got to pop that bowl off and fill this this box here with oil. It doesn't take a whole lot, maybe a third of a quart. Um, the uh, uh, and they say use 90 weight gear oil, but in reality I think you use any old any old motor oil you can get a hold of. Uh, there was also another review I read on the Harbor Freight website where somebody actually didn't know they were supposed to fill it. They ran it dry for a long time and had no ill effects so it's it's just something you ought to do when you get it you pop this off fill it with oil this bolt was extremely tough for me to get uh, you can see where the the, the wrench kind of twisted on it you're gonna have to use a socket or or a a, a, a hex drive uh, but just getting a little open end wrench isn't gonna do it uh, your controls your on off this basically engages and disengages your little, little electrical spark in there uh, that's off. You can pull on that thing all day long, and if this thing's forward, it's not going to run. You pull it back to start it, and then of course you got your little starter thing. You got a, you know, a little safety slice thing on there, so you would pull that trigger back, push this in. And that lets that at that partial thing for starting, and then as soon as you grab it, as soon as you you know do that, you get going. But what I found is. You, uh, with this thing brand new, I never use it with the choke totally disengaged. You got to use it kind of partial. Uh, hold it with both hands. Obviously, right hand controls the the throttle and everything. Left hand's really going to control the positioning on it. And uh, it, it, it's not so powerful; it's going to tear your foot off. But I, I would use good boots when I'm using this because I kick it into place, that sort of thing. Uh, but don't do it barefoot. You know, don't wear sandals when you're using a piece of equipment like this. Uh, when you're taking it out to store it, you don't have to take the oil out. Leave the oil in transmission, but understand that it may leak. Uh, you do need to drain the fuel. They give you a little fuel bottle for that, but that fuel bottle doesn't hold as much as this holds. So, when you, chances are, when you fill that tank at the beginning of a little job, you're still going to have some left in it at the end of that job and so you got to refill that little tank it's air cooled so you know don't stress it out the other thing is um, and it's on the, the stuff here is that now that's a 30 inch auger bit and if you're putting eight foot posts in at two feet deep you're, you're going to be burying that thing basically up to the end of this you know up to the end of the, the, the screw part that's it okay and if you're going to be putting in full four by four posts that hole's not going to be big enough you still need to touch up that hole by hand they do sell a six inch bit that fits on these but here's where it gets tricky it's not rated for it okay so when they sell you that six inch bit you guess what you voided your warranty okay so this is rated to work with a four inch bit and if you get round fence posts, that's how it works. 
you get the square ones you got to touch them up with the uh the post hole digger but anyway if anybody's got any questions i can make a follow-up video later on